So section 13, section, section 16.3, these are the type 2 hypersensitivities reactions that lice foreign cells. Typically these are going to target the cells for destruction and then complement comes in and destroys or lyses the cell. The most common is the ABO blood type interactions when you have the wrong blood type reacting with the type that you have. The blood types were discovered or first demonstrated by Carl Landsteiner in 1904 and he found that the serum of one person could clump the red cells of another and identified four distinct blood types which are called the ABO blood groups. This should be fairly familiar to you if you've had anatomy and physiology or even general biology or majors biology. So I'll just briefly go over this section, but you know that the, the, the markers are genetically determined and they're composed, uh, they're composed of glycoproteins. So there's a little carbohydrate chain and then there's a protein portion that's attached to the membrane of the red blood cells and it's inherited, you get two alleles, one from your mother, one from your father, and that determines your type. So the alleles are A, B, and O. And if you get both A's, then you're gonna have a type A. If you have A and O, you get type A, because O is recessive. And to get B type, you'd have to have BB or BO, and that's the type B, and if you have O type, you'd have to have both O's, and that's because it's recessive to the others. And if you have A and B, they are what we call co-dominant, so you express both A and B antigens on the surface, and that's type AB. So here's some statistics. I'm not gonna ask you about the statistics, they're just there for your information, but just understand that like if you have A type blood, you have the A antigen, and if you have B type blood, you have the B antigen. If you have AB, you have both A and B. And if you have O type blood, you have neither A nor B. That's what those blood typings mean. But that means that in your blood, because you're exposed to these antigens in the normal environment, your body, if you're type A, will produce anti-A or anti-B antibodies. They have deleted the clone that would produce antigens against A because that's a self-antigen. And in type B blood, you have deleted the clone for B, so you, but you still produce anti-A antibodies. If you have A and B antigens, then neither, antigen, neither antibodies for A or B are present. And if you have neither A or, nor B, which is the type O blood, then you have never deleted the anti-A or the anti-B clones, and so you have both anti-A and anti-B antibodies in your blood. And that's why when you mix them, if you have A and you have antibodies against A, then it's gonna clump. If you have B and you have antibodies against B, you're gonna clump, and so on. So the important points about blood types are that they are named for the dominant antigen. And you can see there's the common marker and then there's little carbohydrate chains that come off of there that are different shapes. And so one of them they've named A and the other one they've designated B. And so in A type, AB blood you have both and in O type blood you have neither. So when they clump, as we learn in chapter 17, this is an agglutination reaction. Um, this would be no clumping, this would be clumping. And if you have no clumping for A or B, then you have O type blood. And if it is clumping for the RH factor, then you have uh, positive. And so it's not just like AB is the universal recipient, it's AB positive, which again is very rare. And then O negative, it would be the universal donor because it can give blood to anybody and you should not have any kind of reactions because it's lacking the antibodies or the antigen A and B and RH factor. So the universal donor is LAC is the one that is O type, but technically it would be O negative. And AB has all the antigens, so they have none of these agglutinating antibodies. So AB positive would be the universal recipient. 
And so if you have a transfusion, so this is the most important part. The last parts were things that you should have learned in A&P, but if you have the wrong blood type, uh, so the donor cells have the antigen and the recipient's blood has the antibodies. And when you're given the blood, you're given pretty much just packed red blood cells. And so there's no antibodies with this. Um, so the A donor um, has the antigens and the recipient has the antibodies and they clump together to, that uh, tracks the complement and then they blow up. So here is an animation that will give you an, another picture of what's happening there in type 2 hypersensitivities. Type 2 hypersensitivities involve interactions of antibodies and surface antigens of cells, followed by complement-assisted lysis of these cells. A typical example is mismatched blood transfusions. There are four different blood groups based on types of antigens on the surfaces of the red blood cells. People who are type A have A antigens, and those who are type B have B antigens on the surfaces of their red blood cells. Persons who are type AB have both A and B antigens, and those who are type O have neither A nor B antigens. The serum of people with type A blood contains antibodies against type B antigens, and the serum of people with type B blood contains antibodies against type A antigens. Type AB serum contains neither antibody, and O serum contains antibodies against both A and B antigens. If blood from a person who is type B is transfused into a person who is type A, antibodies present in the type A blood react with the surface antigens on the incoming red blood cells. This leads to complement fixation and lysis of these cells. If blood from a person who is type A is transfused into a person who is type B, Antibodies present in the type B blood react with the surface antigens on the incoming red blood cells. This also leads to complement fixation and cell lysis. Persons who are type O lack A and B antigens on the surfaces of their red blood cells and are therefore universal donors. Persons with type AB blood lack antibodies against A or B antigens and are therefore universal recipients. What's the clinical importance of the Rh factor? The Rh factor, also called the D antigen, is the result of a combination of two alleles. So you get one from your mother, one from your father. And the Rh factor is dominant. So if you have a, even one Rh gene, then you will get the Rh positive and you'll be considered positive blood type. So there's really not just four types of blood, there's really eight types of blood. There's positive and negative for each of the different types. And the plus or minus after the blood type indicates the Rh status. So this development of and control of RH incompatibility, if you are, if the mother is RH negative, which is what's shown in the picture here, and the baby is RH positive, the first RH positive fetus is going to be fine because the mother's and the baby's blood do not mix until childbirth. There's a lot of blood interaction there. And to, if this is not controlled or is not, um, prevented in some way, then the second and every other RH positive fetus after the first RH positive child would then, um, the mother's antibodies would go into the baby's blood, would pass through the placenta, and would interact with the baby's blood and cause hemolysis. So you'd have hemolytic newborns. And uh, that at least, at the very least, they would be very anemic at the worst case scenario they would have, um, they may be born, uh, there may be spontaneous abortion, so uh, stillborn, miscarriage. So what can we do to prevent this? We have the anti-RH antibodies, the Rogam shot, so Rogam, RH for the RH factor, and Gam for gamma globulin. 
And so if you get these shots in the third trimester and then right after the baby is born, then it desensitizes the mother and you won't produce the antibodies. And so you won't have memory of this. And so even though the mothers in the blood, mothers in the baby's blood may mix, uh, this RH antibodies will neutralize the antibodies and stop it from producing an immune response and having memory for this. So then every other baby after that, as long as they get the Rogam shots before, like during the third trimester and then right after birth, then the babies will be born healthy. Our concept check for 16.3. The first question is the blood type of the universal donor is what? It is type O. So O can donate to everybody. The, because it doesn't have any antigens on the surface for the other types to respond to or react to. Type uh, Second question, the blood type of the universal acceptor or recipient is what type? So the opposite of O type blood would be AB because it has both A and B antigens and so they don't have antibodies for either A or B and therefore they will not react to any of the other blood types. So what is the outcome of transfusing the wrong type of blood? So eventually the, the antibodies from the recipient will react with the antigens on the, on the donor blood type and they will clump. So you'll have agglutination which then brings in complement. Complement will cause the blood to the blood cells to be hemolyzed and that is basically a type 2 reaction is the complement lysing the cells but you have to have the antigen antibody complexes on the cell opsonization basically and that attracts the complement but the complement is the one that actually does the damage. So hemolytic disease of the newborn can occur when the mother is Rh blank and the fetus is Rh blank. So it's the mother being Rh negative and the fetus being Rh positive. True or false, there are other Rh RBC antigens besides, so red blood cell antigens besides AB and AB. So really there's just the A and the B antigen that we're talking about here, but um, yes, there are lots of red blood cell antigens besides A and B. Um, these are just the more common and the ones that cause the most serious like transfusion reactions. But there are other red blood cell antigens besides A and B.